Hi everyone, welcome to Q&A with Dr. Cliff. On this episode, we're gonna talk about some really cool cases that I've seen just in the last two weeks at my hospital. We're gonna talk about a dog that at one point was almost paralyzed from the waist down. Another dog that broke its arm but was actually showing very little symptoms. We're gonna review the x-rays, it's quite interesting. And then we're gonna talk about some, a common question I'm getting from some of my followers. So let's first start with the dog with the back issue. Uh, this uh, senior dog, we're gonna call her Bumblebee. Bumblebee uh, recently had, about a year ago, had surgery for a ruptured disc, where the disc in between the vertebrae, there are these little sort of jelly-filled discs in between each vertebrae spine bones um, that kind of act as like shock absorbers. So when the vertebrae bounce and twist, they're not getting like bone on bone. She had a condition called IVDD, or intervertebral disc disease. And what ends up happening with IVDD, as you're gonna see in the diagram, is in IVDD, the disc basically pops up and compresses and pinches the spinal cord. Now, if it just does it a little bit, all you get is a little bit of kind of a wobbly walk and a, almost like a drunken walk, where they're uncoordinated. Um, but if it goes further, they're actually not able to move their back legs and if it's even worse than that, if it's the worst case, you'll actually get a loss of pain reception. So they can't even feel anything at all from the waist down. Now this is an emergency situation. If your dog all of a sudden has back pain um, and is dragging its back legs or is kind of walking around as if its back legs are, are drunk, um, then this may be an IVDD case. You need to talk to your veterinarian right away. You need to likely get to an emergency hospital you generally have 12 to 24 hours for proper medical care and potentially surgery. Without it, you may have a dog that is either euthanized in the worst case scenario or living a life in a wheelchair. So what ends up happening or what happened with Bumblebee is she did have this surgery about a year, year and a half ago, did very, very well. But then the owner gave me a ring and said, hey, she's kind of walking funny. She's got this weird you know, kind of strut to her back end. And so they sent me a video. So we're gonna pull that video up. And what you're gonna see, she's the little one with the cute uh, pink flower. Her back end is walking back and forth. She's kind of walking like she's drunk. She's gonna stumble to the left more often. She's leaning to the left. Um, and right at the end, you'll actually see her kind of crisscross her feet, which is a manner, a thing that dogs don't do at all. We call this type of walk ataxia, and it's basically where the brain is not signaling or understanding where the lower half of the body is. It's a term called proprioception. Um, proprioception is what allows me to close my eyes, touch my nose, I can switch fingers, I can touch my ears, I can touch my eyes, I can do whatever I want. How does my brain know where my nose, my eyes, even heck the tip of my finger is? How does your brain know? It's through this type of neurological signal called proprioception. So it's also what they test if you possibly have been drinking too much, don't drink and drive. If you've been driving and the police think you've been drinking and they're gonna have you shoot with your, stand with your arms out wide, you close your eyes, you touch your nose. They're actually texting proprioception because too much alcohol or other medications or drugs actually affect that, that signal. Now in Bumblebee's case, she did very, very well. Um, she came back in, we did a, a neurological assessment and diagnosed her with her problem that the disc is probably getting a little bit loose again or she's starting to have a little bit of scar tissue. Um, she's now receiving physiotherapy uh, at a really, really cool uh, therapy place near us where they actually have an underwater treadmill for dogs. And she's actually getting acupuncture at our clinic to help those nerves sort of re-signal again. Um, it's very difficult to prevent IVDD. Um, any dog can get it, but the Dachshunds with the long, long backs are more susceptible. Beagles, Pugs, Bostons, a lot of this kind of squishy, stump little body type, squishy body type dogs are more susceptible. Um, the biggest thing though, other than avoiding trauma, is just keeping your dog fit. Nice and lean, good strong muscle you can actually do certain exercises talk to your veterinarian maybe i'll do a video soon on rehab exercises you can do at home kind of like planks and yoga or as i call it doga different things that you can do to keep your dog nice and healthy 
So the second case is with this two-year-old shepherd cross. I call him the rock because he is as tough as a rock. So he basically had injured his front uh, arm, his right front, when he was out hiking. And the family didn't see what happened, um, but he came back. They were in this big sort of park and you can let your dogs run around. He came back and he was, he was holding up his one paw. So they took him to the emergency because these things always happen on the weekend when my clinic's closed. And uh, the emergency hospital noted a lot of swelling, but they checked the wrist, checked the elbow. There was no sort of crunching or instability or what we call crepitus. There was no crepitus there and they were squeezing it and he didn't really seem to react. So they just figured it was a bit of a bone bruise, reasonable, reasonable sort of assessment. And they put him on anti-inflammatories. He came to my clinic like seven, eight, nine days later still not really putting a lot of weight on it unless he's standing still. The swelling was still there, but again, when I squeezed it really hard, and I'm a pretty strong guy, he didn't, he didn't react. He could feel it, but he wasn't showing any signs of pain. But just to be safe, we decided to, to snap a couple of x-rays. So look at these x-rays. I mean, lo and behold, not only, it's, it's very clear, right? Not only is this dog broken its forearm, but he shattered the radius bone. There's two bones in the, in the uh, front arm, the radius and the ulna. He shattered his radius bone. We couldn't believe that this dog was not only, you know, kind of walking and eating, he was wagging his tail and, and acting like nothing happened. So it kind of shows you that, that even all of us, even the specialist a week prior at the emergency hospital can make a mistake and when in doubt, snap some x-rays. Now, the nice thing about this case is we did not need to do surgery and piece all those bone fragments together. Because as you notice, they're all kind of bunched up relatively in the same neighborhood, right? And it's because that other bone, the ulna, is still intact and it's acting like a splint. So all we had to do was we put on a, a, a cast and we wrapped it up with some really cool uh, blue paw print vet wrap. And the nice thing about the cast is as long as you get it in his case, because the breaks in the forearm, as long as you get it to the uh, wrist and to the elbow, so the joint below and the joint above, it's gonna stop this and it's gonna stop this. It's gonna keep that all in place. He's gonna keep that cast on for uh, about five or six weeks. We're gonna check on it regularly, make sure there's no complications and he should end up doing very, very well. So the last one, I want to talk about a common question. Actually, I've had this a half a dozen times from some of my followers, um, either Instagram or email, whatever, they've sent me the same question. And they're basically asking, how is it that I got into global volunteering and how can they do the same? Now, they're not veterinarians, they're just animal lovers, maybe they're technicians, vet technicians, or future veterinarians. And my answer is pretty simple. It's just, you just go and do it. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky that being a veterinarian, my skills are very much required. So I can reach out on email to, uh, to certain places. I've been to Jamaica and India and Egypt and Greece, and I've done all these uh, volunteer trips, even Northern Ontario, and, and they're happy to have me. But the reality is, is you don't have to be a veterinarian and it doesn't have to be this big two or three week trip where all you're doing is volunteering. If you're gonna go on vacation, and especially if you're going to a resort that is kind of a developing country, um, get out of that resort section for the day. You know, maybe a month before you go on, on vacation, search for animal rescues, dog rescues, whatever, wildlife rescues in the area. Let them know that you're interested in making a donation. They need a little bit of money, but I mean $20, $50 goes a long way in these countries and they're really, really gonna appreciate it. And then you go and you spend the day and you can help take care of some of the animals. You can learn a little bit about animal health care. And look, the reality is, is everyone's done zip lining. Everyone's done a little bit of surfing on the beach or whatever. Take that $50 that you're gonna do for one of those adventures, go out of the resort, go see the culture of the place that you are, that you are spending time at meet some people who love animals like we do and like you do and give them the money instead. You're gonna have a much greater adventure than if you do an hour of zip lining. Obviously, you know, it's so amazing. You're gonna to get to do great Instagram photos. Send them to me, please. Um, and so just get out there and you're gonna love it. You're gonna make new friends and you're gonna end up going back and back and back and, and, and learning a lot and most of all, helping animals out and helping animal rescues. So. 
That's it for the episode today. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to tell your friends. Please send me some comments. Send me some emails. Reach out to me on social media about questions you have with your pets, about questions you have about the work I do, anything at all. And last but not least, never forget, always be kind to animals. Thanks. Thanks.